those uh, holes that actually let go of your money or your funds? What, how do you maximize it? There are some people who actually buy cell phones that have all the amenities or the, the features. But do you really, really use all those features? If you're not really using those features, why buy that ex expensive cell phone? Right? So debt, being debt free, we have a session for that because it's a really long session. Okay, principle seven is purpose spending. Spending impulsively, spending more than we make, and not tracking what you spend. This is not only for personal, but also for office, right? What are you spending that you're not tracking off, that you are not following? Is what you're spending really what uh, is what you're spending aligned with your values? Is it aligned with your priorities? Purpose spending. Do you know in the stores, they have, uh, by the cashier, they have all those chocolates or <laughs> gums or whatever. That's impulse buying because while you're waiting, the easy card, then the tendency is to get and then, right? Um, you are, Jay, where are you from? Accenture. Oh, Accenture. If I have a study like that, in Accenture, <laughs> uh, you're not aware of it, but it's impulse buying. <coughs> the things that are there by the cashier, or you're about to pay and you're waiting, your tendency is to buy. So, what is purpose spending? When you spend, you have to have a purpose. When you when you purchase, I usually ask myself, is this uh, something that the Lord wants me to purchase? And then do I really want it or is this a desire? Is my money enough to purchase it and do I have money left over for my more um, important things or things that matters to me? I'm not telling you not to spend, but you have to have a purpose in spending. Is that something that will uh, give or be in line with the priorities that you have in life? When you, when you actually are occupied with owning material things rather than pursuing intellectual and spiritual endeavors to enrich your life, that it is not anymore align with what your priorities are. As I mentioned in the earlier time, it is important to seek God first. Then the money will be the fruit of what you're seeking for. It's just a, it's just a fruit. It's a byproduct. Live below your means. We cannot spend more than we earn. Because really and truly, it is not, you know, sometimes we dream, okay, I want uh, an increased salary, uh, my income should be higher. But that's not the bottom line. Eh? The bottom line is your net worth. How much are you able to set aside? Because you can earn so much, and I know people who earn so much, but their money just goes away so fast. So even if they're earning a lot, their net worth is less than even the regular average employee. If you've read the book, The Millionaire Next Door, are you familiar with that book? Yeah. The people who actually are mentioned there are just regular, ordinary people who knew how to set aside money, who knew how to spend for spending. That's why it is important to review where are you at right now and where you want to be. What are you spending? Are you being practical in the spending habits that you have? So number eight, okay? Number eight is being a good steward. We are all stewards. We're managers of the possessions that God has entrusted us. We're not owners. 
We just manage it for the Lord. Stewardship is being um, involving an attitude about what is important. Our values, our priorities, our vision. It is knowing God's plan for us. Stewards are charged with great authority and responsibility. To me, being a good steward is not only in terms of resources or possessions or time or money, but also we are stewards of our children. God gave us our children. Uh, God gave me to my husband for him to be a good uh, manager of me. Right? Just like you, Valerie, you are the daughter of your dad. And are you married? And when somebody takes your hand in marriage, that person is now going to be the steward over you because he doesn't even, you know, you're not even blood related. But all of a sudden, he's taking you as his uh, wife. Right? Right, Arlene? <laughs> so that's very important. So how are you taking care of that? You're not, you know, you're not the father of Valerie, but you're going to become the husband. So how are you going to take care of Valerie? You're the steward over Valerie. The live in an attitude of gratitude. It is so important to be grateful every day. You know, when you wake up, thank you, Lord, that I'm alive. Thank you, Lord, that this is a great day. Be grateful to your family. You know, sometimes we forget to say thank you to our co-workers, to our loved ones, or sometimes even our loved ones, they're the most, let's say, uh, people who we take for granted because we think or we are thinking that, oh, they'll understand. But after this session, go to your loved ones and just say, you know, I praise God that you are my <coughs> wife. I praise God that you are my husband. Thank you. Thank you for being my husband. Thank you for being my husband. <laughs> you did hear it, Joey. Anyway, so think of, you know, think of at least five items or five things to be grateful for. Because in life, it's so important to be grateful. It's so important to have like a positive attitude. Because you know what? It's really our attitude that will determine. Challenges are there. Trials are there. Nobody's exempted from that, but it's really how we take it in. It's how we face it. Are we facing it with, oh no, this is it again. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Or are you facing it with an attitude that thank you, not for this situation, but thank you that I will be able to overcome it. That I am an overcomer. That I will be delivered from whatever trial or situation that I am in. And God is always faithful to do that, you know. You believe that, right? You believe that. So it is clear that we have to be faithful stewards. You, you've heard of if we are faithful in little things, that we can be faithful in much, and much is given to those who are faithful in little things. Right? The key to understanding God's will in finances is really the proper understanding of what stewardship is all about. Are we good stewards? Are we, can we be trusted with little so we can be trusted with much? Are we planting the right seeds so we can harvest the right fruit? Because at the end of the day, it's really what we plant that we reap, what we sow that we reap. It's a universal, it's a universal rule because we will not harvest mangoes if we plant papaya trees. We will harvest only mangoes if we plant mango trees. So, I hope that you learned something from this session, because the next session will be, um, okay, will be about savings and investments. Thank you so much.